so what we can see downstairs is you know it's really busy there are loads of different people here and, and you can walk around and it can feel a little bit overwhelming maybe so you see how would you go about differentiating yourself in a busy marketplace a here but also just you know on the internet generally how do you do that one of the things that's particularly interesting about the learning technology side of L&D is in-house they have quite a lot of understanding of, of design and making interactive stuff. But what's interesting is seeing how they try and transfer that into the marketing space. So what you do get is a lot of kind of flashy lights and oh look at this, rather than necessarily a strategic approach to looking at you know who are my actual primary buyers and how am I benefiting them and how do I connect to them. Um, I see it a lot within L and and I'm hoping that over the coming years it'll sort of move on from that in the way that some other industries are, um, because there is a lot of enthusiasm, a huge amount of enthusiasm in the industry, and I think it's just knowing how to direct that in terms of marketing. And I think you, you pick up on a really interesting point. In L and D, we're very enthusiastic and passionate about our subject and about learning. We hope. But marketing is a bit of a, a dark art for us, maybe. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm a learning and development professional, what do I need to learn from marketing and, and why is that important to me? I would say uh, that the first thing is, like any specialism, don't assume you know what it means. Um, and I think marketing is one of those areas, uh, like a lot of areas, where, where there is often this preconception that, oh, it's just writing some PR or it's just sending out an advert, where actually everybody is doing that. And that's certainly uh, something to consider around the different aspects of marketing and not just trying to go, we have lots of exciting stuff, let's just show it, because actually that is really difficult to do and be heard because everybody's doing it. And just because what you're doing is exciting doesn't mean that it's not the same for everybody else. Um, so I would say seriously, look at what other people are doing and actually get in some advice. If you don't have marketing in-house, get in some advice and say, look, you know, what are we doing? Uh, how do we do it better? And, and actually, I think you make a really great point there because you know most people know that training journal is part-time for me and I have my own small business. And actually, I've investigated that recently and actually getting some support. And I, you know, I kind of think I know a little bit of this and that, but like you say, it's really highlighting to me the vast swathes of things I don't know and therefore actually go and find that. And actually, I was surprised that it wasn't as expensive as I thought it might be. And actually, for a, a reasonable investment, I can actually get some really good quality help that will send me off in the right direction and I'm not wasting loads of time. So I think that's a really important message, especially for small companies, that actually it can be affordable. You just have to go and ask the question. So that's really important. I think that's actually a really good point, is you, use, you sort of need to know what you're asking. Because if you go to a marketing organisation and say, I want you to make my SEO amazing, the kind of quote you'll get will be completely different and a lot higher to if you go to a company and go, I need some help, can you help me figure out what I need help with? Um, and be more holistic about it. Certainly, I think that relates to the size of your company as well, because if you're kind of a, a, an SME or if you're starting out, you need to be really careful with your budget and what you're going to get from what you're spending, as opposed to a big company that can go, right, here's a shed load of money on design, a shed load of money on SEO. It's just, you know, there are different ways to look at it. I think. So you've mentioned design a couple of times, and I find that an interesting area as a learning designer or an instructional designer myself. So how can I take something that I know already from learning design, and, and how can I apply that to the marketing area, or, or, or is there even any crossover between those two things? There is a degree of crossover, certainly if you think of it from the context of how people uh, interact with the learning interface. There are definitely correlations between that and how people interact with marketing. But what you're looking at instead of kind of one piece of information is you're looking at the sales flow to bring people in. So the story is longer, it has more platforms. And, and what do you mean by platforms? Uh, so I also call them like points of contact with clients. So. Um, Different people have different stats. Some people say that you need seven points of contact before you get noticed, and that's got to be a combination of different platforms like advertising, like a press release, like a video, uh, any kind of anywhere that your clients will see you. Okay, and so so we actually can design that really well from a learning point of view. So is it just is it a little bit of a mind shift to think about actually it's about a business and a sales perspective rather than learning? Is it is it just that or is there's got to be more to it? I'm sure. It's and I 
personally find that a really interesting subject because I think that there's a lot that L&D and marketing can actually learn from each other because there, to me, there's so many correlations between changing people's behaviours through learning and changing people's behaviours through marketing to encourage a buy, um, which in terms of the campaign learning projects that we work on actually uses the skills the other way around. So we're looking at marketing skills to use internally through learning to help people change their behaviours and develop their behaviours based on the understanding that learning is about behaviour change and so is marketing. Um, so what are some of the things that, you know, you specialise in the learning and development area, what are some of the things that you've learned maybe from your clients about learning that you're actually applying to your own work in marketing? Oh, now that's an interesting question. Um, gosh. I would say how much you can edit the same media. So it's actually about being resourceful. So this is something that I found quite inspirational about certainly the e-learning designers, how they can have sort of a set number of base resources or designs or ideas and come up with so many different versions, which from a marketing perspective, um, has opened a lot of doors for me because it's, it's enabled us to do a lot more with the same resources. Yeah, that's really interesting. I'm reading a book on the moment about content marketing and the idea of the stuff that you use in a blog, you can put in a webinar, you can put in a video, you can use a bit of the video in your webinar and, you know, it's just slicing and dicing it and just thinking creatively. So that's really fascinating.